Hello everyone, and welcome to my video about the General Teletronics Incorporated Recordophone Answering Machine, Model 100U, from 1965. We're going to enjoy some of its features together for the first time, because before I re-recorded any of the outgoing messages, I wanted to play what's inside, because a lot of times these answering machines are in fact a time capsule. So we'll get to listen to some of those here shortly. But I wanted to show you this postcard that I also found on eBay. This was an eBay purchase, but I also found this postcard. So check this out. As you can see on this postcard, there is a picture of this lovely machine sitting on a desk with a flower and a little touchstone phone. But notice the touchstone phone doesn't have the star or the pound sign on them. So it must have been before those were in use. The back of the postcard says this. This is Recordophone, manufacturer of the world's finest personal telephone answering systems, designed to fit any of your personal or business needs. The complete line of systems include automatic answering, recording, with and without remote callback, automatic answering only, automatic answering order taking. And then there's some information on who to contact. But look, it's Robosonics Incorporated. So speaking of Robosonics, there's another model of this machine that actually has a icon of a robot on the front. Check this out. So yes, there was a time when telephones looked like this. They did not have screens on them and they did not run apps. This is a Southwestern Bell Freedom phone that I found at a Goodwill store. I was originally going to try and recreate the scene that you saw there in that postcard, but decided against it when I couldn't find a phone at a decent price. But this one was only three bucks. So how do you get a landline if you don't have a landline? Well, I'll show you in a moment how I was able to test this using modern technology mixed with old technology. It's just amazing that the two can still be put together and you can test out an answering machine. But speaking of the answering machine, let's take a look at some of its features and then we'll look at it on the inside, which is definitely the highlight of this particular machine. On the front left side of the unit, starting at the top, we have a rewind function. It's a two button rewind function. So you can hit the start button to begin rewinding your playback tape. Now this is for your messages that you've received. You can hit start and then when you get to the point you want to stop, you hit stop. Down at the lower left corner here we have our on off switch with a small indicator light next to it. We also have an in use indicator lamp as well as a monitor switch. So this switch would allow you to listen to your calls as they come in, or if you don't want to be disturbed, you can simply turn it off. Right in the center of the unit is a giant speaker. This thing is big for something of this caliber. And then to the right of that, we have our volume control. Underneath the volume control, we have all these different selections to choose from. We have the calls side and then we have the announce side. On the announce side we have check and record. On the calls side we have playback and auto answer. Up here at the top right is a ready light. Now this light was damaged during shipment so unfortunately I won't be able to show you when this ready light is supposed to light up but you may have noticed in the postcard photo I showed you that ready light did not exist. The unit arrived with this remote control here. Basically, it's a sound generator. All it says on the front is Telekey Recordophone with an address and name at the bottom. And then we've got a button here, and right next to the button is a patent number. Now all this thing does is create tones. It creates two different tones. If I depress it slightly, I get this. If I depress it all the way in, I get this. Now I have a feeling I know what this is for, but I'm not entirely sure because I haven't yet re-recorded the greeting that's on this answering machine because I wanted you guys to hear it before I erased it. So in any case, we'll see in a moment what this thing does and maybe find out together. The unit also came with a microphone. Here is that microphone. The microphone is actually fairly cheap 
compared to the build quality of the rest of the unit. So I'm not sure if this is not original or maybe it is original and it just is cheaply made. But uh, it just says, yeah, it says record a phone on a little tiny sticker right here. But this has definitely got that cheap, plasticky Chinese feel of uh, products of that time. Maybe those older portable reel-to-reels that were sold back then that were rim drive oftentimes came with this kind of build quality. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at the back of the unit and you can see what's going on there. On the back left, you'll notice there is a Underwriters Laboratories sticker on here. It's a UL listed telephone answering equipment. And up here on the top is some interesting indicators that were put there after the unit was purchased. It indicates that it was overhauled on February 4th of 1983. So the fact that this unit actually works may be because of this. It shows here that it was originally purchased April 15th, 1975 by J.H. Sherwood. Then here in the center is a bracket that holds the microphone. So you can stick your microphone here to store it out of the way because you're not going to be changing your greeting every day anyway, right? So just put the microphone here on the back. This is a switch that I'm not sure what does. In the middle it says no code with an arrow and then to the left it indicates zero. What does that do? So again, three positions, zero, no code, and a cum with a period. Down below is a another little device I'm not entirely sure what this does. It's definitely not to switch voltages because if that was the case, I would touch it and die immediately. So again, I'm not sure what this thing does. It's obviously some kind of a jumper selector and apparently it had a cap that goes over it and that cap is missing. Some of you may know what that's for and you could leave it down in the comments if you don't mind sharing with us. And then down in the lower right hand corner of the back, we have the UL indicator again here. And then we have a, a little plate that shows model 100U with a serial number, a code, and then it says manufactured by Recordophone, a division of Electrospace Corporation. 117 volts AC, 0.04 to 0.9 amps. 50 to 60 cycles. To the right of that little plate is a little switch that says erase. So I would assume that by switching that button on you could erase everything on your messages tape. The unit weighs in at a hefty 19 pounds. It's about the size of a small stereo receiver. The dimensions are almost equal to one and it feels about as heavy as one. So it's, uh, it's quite hefty for an answering machine, that's for sure. I've already done some work in the background. I've done some lubrication and some cleaning to the unit. It really didn't take a lot to get it running again, which is pretty amazing for something this old. So let's go ahead and take a listen to the greetings that are already on the unit. To do so, we're gonna switch this monitor switch on and then switch the power on. And then we're going to use the remote here and press this black button. Our selector switch is on announce check. Let's go ahead and hit the button now and take a listen. Hi, you reached 262-6387. We're not home right now, but um, if you want to leave a message, you could right after the beep. Thank you. Now, some of the messages that are on here are pretty funny. Actually, one of them is really funny, but uh, the rest of them are just normal, average, everyday messages. So let's go to the playback switch here. I'll hit, I'm going to hit rewind over here. Linda, this is Cindy. I'm very disappointed to hear what you did to Carlos and your friend Richard Ashby today. I'll still wish you a good trip, but I'm not happy with you. Bye. You better bring me nice presents, too. Bye. Okay, uh, that sounds uh, very funny. All right, now that we've heard both the, the outgoing greeting and some of the messages, let's take a look inside and see what's going on because it's pretty darn cool. And here are the guts of the unit here. 
we'll start on the left and you'll see that there is a tape system built into this. Now, more modern units, more modern answering machines had two tapes in them, either two cassettes or two micro cassettes. But the, the system is essentially the same in both places. You have one endless loop tape for your grading and then you have a spool of tape for your messages that are incoming. On this side, this is a rim-driven system. It has a separate motor right underneath here that uh, this little pulley behind this bracket actually does the take up of this spindle here and does the rewind via this pulley here, okay? You have your playback head and erase head. You've got a set of wires that ride along the tape and there is a foil sensor on there to tell the unit that it has reached the end or the beginning, I should say, of the tape. The end of the tape is detected by this switch here and there's a little needle that you see here, a little pin that sits out, rides out on the tape and tells the unit when it has run out of tape. You've got a big solenoid up here that's going to take care of the actual movement of this unit for its functionality. In the center, we have our endless loop tape. Again, these are not removable. I mean, you could replace the tape, but the, the idea was it was a permanent setup. Got your playback record head here. You got another foil sensor here. You got your pinch roller and capstan here. You've got a separate motor here for this part, as well as a separate motor for that as well. And then we'll take a look at some of the circuitry over here on the right. The unit has a bunch of relays. You can see them here. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight relays there. So those handle both the functionality of the playback and record, as well as uh, picking up and hanging up on the phone line. Here is a close up of the selector switch that you use to select the different functions on the front of the unit there in the midst of that chaos of wiring. And now the super fun part, getting to show you what goes on underneath the hood. So let's go to our announce check, switch on the front, and then press the button, and then watch this section here come to life. Hi, you reached 2626387. We're not home right now, but um, if you want to leave a message, you could right after the beat. Thank you. Did you hear the click? So something in the system heard that sound and clicked a little solenoid in there, a little relay, I should say. So we'll watch for the, uh, for the foil sensor to come around and shut the unit off. And there it is. All right, now let's see the playback side over here. Again, really cool stuff. Let's switch over to the playback. I'll rewind it for you so you can hear that first cool message again. Here's a view of the inside lower left corner of the unit. You can see there's a transformer here on the right as well as some fuses there on the left. Let's go ahead and pan up and we'll take a closer look at this ingeniously made tape deck right here. Let's see it in action one more time here.
I was wondering if we can get, go out and share together or something. And do, or do something tonight. Something. Okay, sis, but give me a call when you get in, okay? Love you a lot. Hope to be here from you soon. Bye-bye. And Sarah, hi, sis, love you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> You may have noticed some occasional distortion in the audio. Well, again, this thing is rim driven, so everything audio quality wise is determined on this little, this I guess you would call it a capstan here, and then this pinch roller, which is actually the thing that's turning the tape, pulling the tape. And you might notice here there's a little dent in that rubber tire that's on the outside. So from sitting for years and years and years in the same spot, our rubber tire has a dent in it. So as the unit turns around and hits that little dent, it's going to affect the audio and put a little distortion in the sound. But again, rim drive is not the most accurate because you'll notice that the, the playback on the outgoing message is much clearer and much cleaner because number one, the speed is faster, but number two, it again has a pinch roller and capstan pulling the tape through. For the next part of our video, let's demonstrate it actually answering a phone call and recording a message. So in order to do so, I'm going to need a landline. Well, how do you get a landline these days? I mean, this is my option here to connect this to a phone line. Isn't that beautiful? So this is the old school connector, probably your first generation connector to your household phone line. So you would have had a jack in the wall to plug this cord into that jack in the wall would have looked like that. Well, that's not what a modern connection looks like. A modern connection looks like that. So how do you get an old school machine like this to answer a phone call when you don't have a landline? Well, I did a little looking around online, came to the decision that this would probably be a good option. So this is a Magic Jack Express. This little device is actually a voice over IP phone system, phone connector, that you either connect to a computer or you connect to an ethernet. You can see here it's got a place for the phone jack here and a place for ethernet here. So it's not dependent upon a computer, but you can use it with one, all right? So this is kind of old school anyway. You can see the by the, uh, the model of iPhone that's displayed on the inside cover here, that this has been around a while. The nice thing is this company still exists and you can find these online. I'll put a link down in the description below so you can buy one of these if you'd like to. They're not that expensive. The nice thing about it is it has three months of service included with it and no contracts. So you can sign up and have a phone jack to play with old telephone equipment on, okay? So what does the unit look like? The unit, once you get it all set up, looks like this. So again, there's your ethernet port. If you just wanna plug it into your router at home and then plug the phone in next to it. It also has an app, so you can download the app and use the same phone number. You get a real number with this thing and uh, you can set up a real number with it and use it on your phone as a second phone number. 
Eventually it costs money and I'm not sure how much it costs. I'm just enjoying the three free months that are included with it. All right, so let's give this a demo and make a call to the unit and watch it answer the phone. All right, I've got Mr. Magic Jack plugged into the USB port on my Dell laptop and I've got their software up on the screen so I can go ahead and make a call and in this case I'm going to test out the little uh, telephone, the little Southwestern Bell telephone I got just to make sure that I can get a ring. And of course that's not the number I'm dialing but I don't want you all calling this number so here we go. Hello? 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 Anybody home? Hello? All right, it works. Now let's go ahead and try it on our answering machine and see what happens. Okay, for my test call to the answering machine, I've got the monitor switched off, so that way I don't get any feedback. And then I'm gonna go ahead and call the number and I'll put it on speakerphone on my phone here. Hello, this is Databits here, and we are trying out your amazing answering machine. It's really nice and wonderful, and we absolutely love it. Thank you, and have a nice day. All right, I've hung up. Hello, this is Databits here, and we are trying out your amazing answering machine. It's really nice and wonderful, and we absolutely love it. Thank you, and have a nice day. It's time to test out our theory. Do we really need to record a beep using this microphone and this gadget? All right, let's give it a try. So what I'm going to do is I've got the machine set on Announce Record, and I'm going to hit the button, and I'm going to then be ready to do the the, the beep thing here, like that. All right, so here we go. Ready? Hello, you have reached the wonderful company known as Databits. All right, a couple of things. Number one, I discovered that you have to hold this button down the entire time that you're making your recording. Once you release it, it puts the tone on the tape. So it doesn't have anything to do with this guy yet. So I wonder if this is somehow able to get us our messages remotely. I don't know. That's uh, worth trying out. Anyway, here's what we ended up with with our announcement. Hello, and thank you for calling the DataBits channel. We're sorry, but we are currently unavailable to take your call in person at this time. We are busy making our next award-winning YouTube video. Please leave your name, the time you called, a brief message, your social security number, your credit card number, and any other numbers we can use to steal your identity after the tone. Thank you, and we look forward to serving you. Goodbye. Well, I tried using this gadget both during recording of the greeting and of recording a message over the telephone, and this didn't do anything. So I don't know if there is something that needs to be activated in order to use it, or if maybe this functionality doesn't work anymore. I can't see how this thing would be able to play back your messages without physically flipping that switch here on the front, though. So that's more of a, a computer-controlled thing. But I could be wrong. Anyway, I'll bet you somebody out there watching this video knows what this gadget was for and can tell us. And maybe I can try using it on a future video. But in any case, that is going to do it for this video. Wasn't this fun? Answering machines are so cool, especially old ones that still work. Anyway, this one's definitely a keeper. I'll put it in my archive for future use. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. 
I hope you'll share it with 15,000 of your friends. I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel and click the little bell so that you are notified anytime a Databits video is made. And also, uh, thanks to my Patreon subscribers out there who help fund finding cool gadgets like this. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.